Okay, in our last video, uh, we looked at how to analyze uh, transactions using the uh, T account structure. However, uh, T accounts are very impractical as a permanent record of our transactions. Um, um, for a permanent record, we use a, uh, a, a book called a, a general journal. Now, but before I get into the general journal, I want to um, introduce you to uh, the chart of accounts, which is um, essentially just the listing of all accounts used in the books, generally arranged in order of uh, asset uh, categories, then liability categories, and then the equi equity categories. Uh, for your business, son, um, let's just have a look at a simple uh, chart of accounts. So we, uh, you know, you might have uh, two bank accounts, a bank savings account for your business and a bank checking account. Um, these would be uh, subcategorized as your cash accounts. Uh, then you would have perhaps uh, some people that uh, um, occasionally owe you money, you know, bars uh, where you hold your parties, uh, especially if they're providing the liquor and giving you a piece of the liquor sales uh, for a period of time, they might owe you money. And so we would set them up with their own uh, account and uh, they'd be referred to as our accounts receivables. Uh, then we would have several inventory accounts. Uh, you would have hand bills that you pass out, uh, liquor inventory, uh, clothing inventory for your um, for your uh, t-shirts that you sell, and a prizes inventory for prizes that you give out at these parties. And um, uh, these would be generally classified as your inventory accounts. Uh, I'll just skip the GST paid uh, for a moment. Uh, we would also have equipment uh, subcategory of, under assets. Uh, and I would keep a separate account for each of your major pieces of equipment, like your turntables account and a speaker's account and your vinyl records account. Just jumping back to the GST paid, as you know, um, uh, the way the GST works with the federal government, uh, you have to pay them, I think it's quarterly, uh, all the GST you've collected less the GST you've paid to your own suppliers. So you're basically just paying GST on the kind of value added that you, uh, that you create in your business. So when you pay out GST, we want to keep a record of what you've paid so that when you go to uh, pay your GST tax, we can subtract it from the GST that uh, you've collected or that you owe them. And so for the the three months or so, uh, the GST that you've paid out becomes an asset uh, on your books, and then you clear it out when you, uh, when you go to pay the GST. So that's why we have one of those. And then under the liabilities, um, you would have certain people that uh, extend you credit for a period of time, maybe your printer, your designer, uh, your DJs. Uh, you may not pay them uh, the night of the party. You might not pay them for a week or, or, or so. Uh, so you would owe them money for a while. Uh, if you hire out a bartender, um, you might not pay them immediately. Uh, the clothing store where you get your t-shirts might extend you credit until uh, you've had a party and have sold some of them. And then, of course, you're going to have, and, and these would be referred to as accounts payable. Then you also have the taxes payable. Now, being a partnership, you don't pay income taxes through the company, so there's no need to keep an income taxes payable um, account. But you do uh, uh, collect GST when you sell tickets and sell clothing, and uh, so you have to keep track of that. And you also uh, collect provincial sales tax on some of those items, so you have to keep track of that, and that is payable at some point in the future. Then you have uh, loans payable, um, and in your case, it's just to the bank. And we always split uh, our loans that are payable into the current portion that's payable, which is the portion that we have to pay off in, in, uh, in the next year or, or uh, in the next 12 calendar months or the next uh, remaining uh, portion of the fiscal year and uh, the amount of bank loan that we don't have to pay off until after the fiscal year into the next year. So we just split that up. And uh, if you have a line of credit, well, you'd have to have an account for it. Now let's look at the equity accounts. Uh, contributed capital, obviously, the money that uh, the seed money that you and your partner put in would, would constitute a, an account. Uh, retained earnings. Uh, I won't go into what that account is at this point, uh, but you definitely need one. 
uh, but we also uh, create subcategories under the equity of revenue or income uh, subcategory and expenses subcategory. And the, the reason we do this is that these accounts here are really where all the action takes place in your business. You're busy selling things, but before you can sell them, you have expenses incurred in the selling process. And um, uh, we actually uh, s separate them out from, uh, uh, or, or, or we subcategorize them under the equity. And uh, so in your revenue or income accounts, you'd have ticket sales to your shows, uh, clothing sales for your, uh, for your designer t-shirts, and liquor sales. Um, and under expenses, uh, you'd have accounts for equipment, rental, uh, transportation, uh, moving equipment, rental uh, 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 from place to place, uh, handbills that uh, you've passed out, um, uh, DJs that you've paid, uh, liquor that you've paid for that has uh, gone through the selling process and has uh, been consumed, uh, clothing that is out of inventory and, and, and has been uh, sold to clients prizes that are no longer in inventory but uh, have been passed out at the parties and uh, depreciation expense and interest expense. Now one of the accounts I didn't discuss uh, that is classified under uh, uh, assets equipment is the accumulated depreciation account. Um, this account is referred to as a contra account and let me explain how it works. It actually records that portion of the expense that we uh, we have from our turntable speakers and vinyl uh, for the current year's revenue. Uh, turntable speakers and vinyl or the equipment account are assets uh, whose benefits will last longer than the current fiscal period of the current year. Uh, therefore uh, we cannot write them off as expenses uh, as soon as we buy them. Uh, we have to depreciate or expense them over the lifetime, over their lifetime, which might be, say, three years. So each year we would write off a third of their cost against uh, expenses. Uh, and um, by the end of the three years, when they're worthless, they're not sitting on the books as having any value. But uh, the way we do that is not by crediting the turntables account or the speaker's account or the vinyl account, because we actually want to see them at cost. What we do is we credit uh, a fourth account or the contra account called the accumulated depreciation account and then we subtract that from the total equipment value to give us our net or our current um, uh, fair market value of the equipment or I'm sorry not our fair market value but our, our current uh, depreciated value of our, equi our equipment and so the internal transaction for expensing that equipment would debit a uh, uh, an, uh, a depreciation expense um, so that we don't overstate our revenue in that year and it would credit the accumulated depreciation uh, account. So that's how we take care of writing off our asset uh, equipment whose uh, useful life is greater than one year. Now the government's very strict on uh, how much uh, and how we write off uh, equipment uh, depreciation and uh, and that's definitely something that we have to pay attention to when we're doing our books. The final point I want to make is that we have been somewhat arbitrary in the naming of our accounts, which is just fine for uh, small business and, and somebody in your situation. Uh, however, as you grow, uh, you might want to uh, uh, become more traditional in how you name accounts and there are naming conventions that accountants use and, and, and different organizations use and it's actually uh, they name the accounts with uh, numbers uh, and then they give them a descriptive name. Uh, so a cash account would be a number 1000 uh, and, and uh, you, you would call it you know, a bank account. But that just gives you a kind of a, a chart of, of uh, a typical uh, uh, use of numbers for naming accounts and how they relate to categories. Um, but we'll be able to, because we're going to use a computer system, later on we can use a, a mapping of our named accounts to a more formalized numerical system. And if you want to read more about it, there's a little uh, web address there that's got a pretty good uh, one-page blurb on uh, naming a chart of accounts. So uh, that's all I'm going to talk about for a chart of accounts. It's just the listing of your accounts that you're going to be posting uh, transactions to. You can uh, add new accounts as needed and insert them uh, uh, in the list where appropriate.
um, next lesson, I'm going to talk about the uh, general journal and the posting of journal entries to the general ledger. Uh, so uh, thanks for listening, son, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.